All right, Griselda boys. We're finally getting into some Griselda. Conway the Machine, God Don't Make Mistakes. Interesting album title there. Uh, I already want to like talk about that, but it's all assumption at this point, right? I'm aware of Conway being shot in the head and in the neck, which caused like se severe paralysis, I suppose, which is why a part of his face is still partially paralyzed and he's pushing through all that stuff. and. You, know, you see instances, I actually just saw the other day, I didn't watch it, but it came up on my feed. It was Steve-O from Jackass talking about, well, the, the title was, he was glad his alcoholism was severe because now he's sober. So I have to assume that the severity of it forced him to take a new direction. <clears throat> and every now and then in life, we see that, don't we? Disaster, horrible disaster that turns into something in the long run for the person maybe that was kind of a blessing kind of turns into a well i don't want to say blessing i don't want to say that but really why i bring this idea up is because i very much exist in the idea of maybe you know the 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 buddhist parable i've shared before you can look it up it's it's hell it's even in the movie uh, charlie wilson's war although i don't like the way they tell it in that movie uh, anyway we never know we never know. Something that might seem like it's good could end up being bad. Someone wins the lottery, $100 million. Yay, they're made for life, right? And two years later, they're in total ruin. Someone gets in a terrible car accident. Oh, how awful. And it turns out this, that, and the other. You just never know. You never know. And I try and focus on that a lot because sometimes it's easy to get stuck on our own little islands, our own little seeing right here right in front of us right the, the five inches that are that are coming we don't know what's way down the road and so it's easy to get hung up on maybe we're unhappy with what's happening right now not realizing that six months from now a year from now it's gonna be totally different or maybe not who knows <laughs> that's what's so fun about maybe we don't know and i like trying to engage that idea we don't know we don't know so just keep moving forward because what else are you gonna do you know, we do know one thing's for sure. If we do nothing, nothing will improve. That's for sure. There are a couple tracks I've heard. So I was pulling up, there's three music videos. <clears throat> the music videos are going to be Patreon only. Patreon's two bucks a month. Something that's nice about Patreon. There's well over a hundred albums uncut there. There's also no commercials. So if you're watching on YouTube and you're sick and tired of the ads, the record companies that claim these videos because I'm using the music, they just load it up with ads. So if you're sick and tired of commercials, you want to just watch this uninterrupted, Patreon, $2 a month, over 100 albums. Going to do three music videos. John Woo flick, it had the red bar completed, so I've probably seen that before. I don't remember it. I might recognize it when we listen to it on this go-through, but just a heads up on that. Other than that, I've gotten a couple good write-ups. Thank you, old head in Discord, for writing up what you have. Uh, other people have sent me stuff as well. I kind of want to just drop in. Like people have told me, here's what's coming. I'm excited. I'm very interested. And uh, we'll shut up and start listening. Track one is going to be Lock Load. So Griselda is, what is it? It's Conway, Benny the Butcher, and West Side Gun, I believe, is the other person that makes up the group. And one of them, they're, they're brothers or cousin, whatever. Anyway, anyway, there you go. Obviously, I'm well well-versed and highly knowledgeable about them after reading all the write-ups. And I, I have to admit, I apologize that some of you write incredible write-ups and then three days later I go, what was that thing? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you're kind of, kind of wasting your time a little bit because this whole brain, it just don't, mm, it don't cling to information like it used to. <laughs> all right, track one, lock load. Conway the Machine and Benny Siegel, produced by Beat Butcher and Derringer. Let's drop in. First time hearing, well, technically first time hearing, although I have heard before, but I don't really remember. So here we go. Drop it into Conway the Machine. God don't make mistakes. Oh, it just drops right in, too. Nice. 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 Kind of darker, that like grindy synth back there. So 
motherfuckers quit fly. You can go and ask the mother niggas that tell you what's up. I already been through there and hit one of them niggas up. Mama stop thinking I'm crazy, baby. Mama think I'm nuts. Ever since them niggas shot me, I just stopped giving a fuck. Yeah, no shit. I'm losing my marble, letting the AR go. 50 shot sticks will do you niggas something horrible. 260 on the digi dash, look how fast my car go. Talk about my Facebook, can't say shit about my buzz, though. <laughs> just pausing settling into the sound different sound as always i'm coming off of tizo touchdowns uh how do you sleep at night very different album prior to that was watch my back by lucky very different album <laughs> i've been kind of running the gauntlet in terms of changing sounds ever since then people shot me i just stopped giving a fuck pretty hard to argue with that you get shot in the head shot in the neck Obviously, I mean, if somebody's shooting at you, they're, they're trying to kill you already. But if you get shot in the head, and then I mean, they're really, really, really trying to kill you. And then to survive that paralysis, hard to give a fuck after that, right? Like, it, it kind of just takes things and, you know, I obviously have never lived in any kind of environment where, you know, I got to carry a weapon with me and all this, you know, people are getting killed or whatever. But you already know it's real. You're seeing it happen. You're seeing it happen to your buddies, your enemies, whatever. And then when it really happens to you, like really, really happens to you, it kind of just, I don't know. It's like, it's like taking the hot blade of steel and sticking it into the cold. And like, what do they call that? I forget what that's called, but it like hardens the steel. Like, no, this is okay. We're, we're in now. Like I, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to, I can imagine the, the amount of uh, restraint that would just evaporate after that. Like, okay, this is how serious it is. Fine. I'm just going to light up every fucking time. Somebody approaches me. I'm not even going to ask questions. Like, that's how I would be. I mean, that's how real it is. Shot in the head, shot in the neck. Hmm. Let's keep rolling. I don't really have a whole lot else to say. There's a couple of good lines in here. Uh, you know, they talk about my face, but can't say shit about my bars. <laughs> That's good, but let's keep rolling. I don't want to talk too much this early in. This part is like, it's almost like a mantra, like fucking lock, load, lock, almost like marching orders. It's, you know, just kind of this mindset. That's obsolete, when you squeeze from the neck up, M16, equipped with the hemp, feel like Tony, squick, read the blank, hard flick when I spit without using a pen, <sighs> dance with the devil, the death call, I'm out the box, with the slant if it's killing the crazy. Ball ball. call on block, get stuffed in the can or work off, get clipped, when that clip with the switch get lift off. This part, man, it really, I'll talk about it at the end. Trippy. So one thing I want to say before I go, this lock, low, like the way they say it, the rhythmic nature and the patience, it kind of reminds me of like, You've seen like, I guess it's like cartoons or maybe like really old videos where like, I don't know, they're working the railroad or something, but it's like two guys and like, you know, one hammers and then the other hammers and then the other hammers and then the other hammers, right? Work. This whole lock, load, lock, lo it's work. They're not bragging. They're not saying it to sound bad at like, no, we're going to fucking work. And it's, it's methodical. And it's heavy, and it's it's 
kind of feels like tiresome. Like the way they do it, it makes me think of some, you know, two people working in tandem, swinging these heavy ass hammers down, which is hard work, tiring work, grueling work. And I mean, it kind of that, that parallel, I feel like fucking matches this perfectly. And you know, he starts out, it's spooky. Up at the very top, it's spooky. It's way too spooky. And this song is kind of spooky. It's dark. It feels like it's nighttime. It feels like I need to look over my shoulder. It just has that aesthetic to it. Huh. Crazy, man. What's GXF to the death? I need to figure that out. Griselda Records began as a clothing line. Okay. GXF or GXFR is another term for Griselda Records. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know on that one. Ha. Huh. Well, let's keep moving forward. Interesting song. It kind of sets the tone. We'll see how the rest of the album plays out. Track two is called Tear Gas. It's featuring Rick Ross and Lil Wayne. Produced by Cosmo, G. Coop, and Vital Garcia. Track two is Tear Gas. And Griselda was like some old lady who like was a cutthroat coke dealer or some shit like that. I'm just trying to keep my head above the water. My feet on solid ground. Post traumatic stress disorder got me smoking out of bounds. Heard a nigga say he gonna do something to me. How that sound? Anybody get out of bounds? Shots gonna come and knock him down. Probably won't get my flowers while I can smell them. It's gonna take my untimely demise before they realize I was a legend. I can see this shit now. Everybody posting their pictures with a caption to make people think you really was my nigga. So uh. I'm on. Let them fuck niggas in my funeral. Bury me in my shoes so niggas know my life is beautiful. Uh. It was to write it. All challenges are invited. Uh -huh. They always inspired by that feeling that I provided. You don't know the feeling of never Good production. And this is Russell Wilson type nigga raising your little man. Real shit. I know the feeling. Ain't seen my son in a minute. Nah. DM don't answer for me, so fuck her. I'm in my feelings. Fuck. I talk it cause I live it. Don't give a fuck about no image. And I'm just getting started. My story is far from finished. My little brother just came home from Nice carry time. over there. Go in his pocket cause I love to see him fly. Uh -huh. GS on his neck. Even if I gotta give him mine. And my bro don't owe me shit cause I just wanna see him shine. There for me when I got shot, the niggas wasn't there for me. It wasn't there. They wasn't there for me. When I needed you most, you wasn't there for me. When you was out then, I feel like they scared of me. Yeah. I'll pause here. Holy shit. So early, early in the verse, he's talking about keeping his head above water, PTSD, got me smoking a pound. Of course, people talking about they're gonna do something. Probably won't get my flowers while I can smell them. It's going to take my untimely demise before they realize I was a legend. I can see this shit now. Everybody posting their pictures with a caption to make people think it was really my, I guess I'll say friend here. <laughs> Told my mama, don't let them fuck people in my funeral. So just fake friends, right? Trying to kind of, I don't even know. It's, it's weird when somebody dies and people like, it's almost like this riding the coattails or something. I, I don't know. It's very strange sometimes. But I didn't really think too much of that because <clears throat> if you're a rapper or, I mean, who knows, right? The the weird relationships that exist in, in his kind of life. But then you get to the fucking chorus. When I got shot, they weren't there for me. When I needed you most, you weren't there for me. Whole, like, that really solidifies who he's talking about. I mean, obviously I don't know individuals, names, etc. but like <laughs> that's, it's one thing. I mean, I, this is like a, a layer to getting shot. All of a sudden, you know, you're shot, you're fucked up, whatever. And then all of a sudden the people who you thought were your friends, you thought were going to back you up and be there for you are gone. <sighs> I mean, talk about putting a layer of ice over a heart, right? That'll do it. That'll do it. Absolutely. I mean, you know who your enemies are and you know who your friends are not. Oh, God. And you find it all out in essentially the same moment of time. Hmm. Hmm. And it's called tear gas. Uh, this, is, this is really cool. Good production. 
trying to absorb everything but the production. I like this. I like the vocals that are floating around in the back. I like the drum beat. Good shit. Good shit. Let's keep rolling. Now I'm in my bag and I bet them niggas petrified, too terrified to testify. You get terrorized. That's death to find. Guy second guy by the parts can't be specified. Huh. Set on fire. By his dinner work, he get identified. His bitch gotta come and verify. The revolution will be televised. I'm about to binge watch. Fuck on Zoom and let our friends watch. Let that free dope. No cap, no syringe top. Killing pussy. The dick need teardrops. Tell the ops in a pen drop. Huh. Be there in 10 shots. Clip four. Like an inbox, shoot you in your ear pods. I like to thank my plug at this time. I cannot forget slime. It's a thin line. It's wheezy and kind. Catches on the incline. Up, up, and thin air. So high sometimes my throne feel like a wheelchair. I'm half dead as it is. Flag red as it is. Come on the balcony. I listen to the birds chirp. 200 acres. Let me show you what my words worth. My women vintage and sin of scum with the service. Regurgitate all the bitches who really worthless. My bitch position come with the pensions and purses. I'm talking Vince's Balmain and all of the Birkins. Young niggas beef them, we bust them down in their verses. Contact the killers when shooters begin their service. You I love that drum fill to close out the beat I'm cycle. The calling and calling shots, I'm the colonel. I love that, that fill closing out the beat there. Fucking, <laughs> fucking Lil Wayne. Uh, where is it? I'm about to bin watch. Fuck around Zoom and tell it, let her friends watch. That's that free dope. No cap. No syringe shop. Kill a pussy. The dick needs teardrops. <laughs> so there's a couple things in that line right there because I don't. I mean, as far as I understand, like if you get the teardrop, then that means you've murdered somebody, right? But like, if you think of like emojis, you do what it is it? The eggplant and the water, the teardrop. <laughs> so good, good, good player right there. Uh, it's just funny. Uh, I don't really have a lot to say about Rick Ross's verse. I mean, it's cool, but it, honestly, the thing is, is I just, I lose interest when somebody starts talking about women in cars. I, I don't fucking care. So great. I mean, cool. Great. <laughs> awesome. I like Lil Wayne's though. That shit about kill a pussy. <laughs> and the dick needing a tattoo of a teardrop. That's just, that's just funny. Cool song. Very cool song. I don't, did I talk, how much did I talk about on the first verse already? I did. Oh, yeah, 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 I did. The fake people at the, at the funeral, friends, finding out who your friends are not. Cool track. Okay, moving on to track three. It's called Piano Love. Uh, it's produced by The Alchemist. All right. I need to listen to, what is it? Alfredo, I believe. Alchemist and Freddie Gibbs. I, I, I have that on my list. I kind of moved it up a little bit. I want to get to that one somewhat soon. I want to get to so many albums somewhat soon, which means <laughs> two years from now, right? Track three, Piano Love. Here we go. Nice. Creepy sound here with the piano. Very dark. Foreboding. Bought my bitch the Chanel jacket with the big Chanel bag. Sneak the hammer in the club, the realest bitch I ever had. My plug like Lulu, give me whatever I ask. Bucking low like Ace Boogie, I re up 200 cash. Richest nigga in my city, got my neck on Rick the Ruler. Press box at all the games, sitting next to the Pagoulas. Came up with them brick sellers and them 100 pound movers. I just made another play and bought an effing for my shooters, nigga. Uh, 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 I love this muted sound. Oh, that comes out. Extra five if I got it to you. We the mob, you violate that. I gotta shoot you. My young boy quit drinking lean. He going cold turkey. Sticks and stones don't break my bones. While my bitch don't hurt. Nail jacket with the bullets don't hurt. Sneak the hammer in the club. The realest bitch I ever had. Something about this song that I'm enjoying immediately is the production is very dark unsettling not um i was gonna say pleasant but that's not really what i mean not uh joyous you know there's no happiness floating around in this sound and then he goes through this verse newspapers on the windows no curtains fiends knocking soul searching it's kind of interesting right there water's turned off in the trap fuck it stove's working so he's really painting this picture of <clears throat> some shithole rundown place that's I almost like maybe even abandoned or the water's turned off whatever but they're still fucking cooking up right making them drugs and the reason why I like all this together is because this flies right in the face of the cliche stereotypical criticism of, of rap and how it glorifies drugs right it glorifies all these things 
There's nothing glorious about this. It's very dark, very um, almost sinister. But sinister in this, the fact that he's in this. He's, he's not like, well, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of masterminding to it or whatever, or being in charge of it, but it's very much in this. Not like from the outside looking in or anything like that. Sticks and stones don't break my bones and bullets don't hurt me. That's a fucking cold ass line right there. <laughs> Let's keep going. My plug like Lulu, give me whatever I ask. Walking low like Ace Boogie, I re-up 200 cash. Richest nigga in the city, got my neck on Rick the Ruler. Press box at all the games, sitting next to the I love how mute you came up with the brick sellers and the one that I'm I just made another plate and bought an effing for my shooters, nigga. Yeah. Throw some bake in the pot with some ice. The dope I cook, Wait, lock up sneaker box with pants in the bag. You think I left foot locker? Huh. Young nigga behind your garage, holding a full chopper. Dropped out of school, decided he just gonna push product. Right. Ain't no respect in my hood unless you put in some pain. Ah. Keep sleeping on my city and thinking this shit a game. This we don't play fair. Drive by's right in front of the day. Holy Spray shit. Pin triggers that effing on the waist here. Yeah, garbage bags wrapped around the case here. Told you it was spooky. My nigga is king. Well, first the 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 Sneak the hammer in the club. The realest bitch I ever had. My plug like Lulu. Give me whatever I ask. Bucket low like Ace Book. I read up 200 cash. Alchemist, nigga. Spooky, nigga. Way spooky. Way spooky. Way spooky. God, this beat is just kind of perfect for this. Even the drum beat is just kind of like fucking cold, haunting. Alchemist did a great job there. Phenomenal job on that production. That was excellent. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine that song sounding any other way just because it makes it sound and feel so dark. So fucking dark. We don't play fair drive-bys right in front of the daycare. <laughs> Fuck, man. And, you know, part of me wants to, like, not like this in the sense of the, the, the United States has a gun problem. Uh, I think, it, I, in my opinion, the gun problem is a symptom of a mental health problem of a... Uh, cult like thinking group problem misinformation problem like just there's a lot, we got a lot of problems in the states and i feel like the gun violence is a is an extension is an as a symptom of a of a core problem <clears throat> and so it's it, like i don't want to sit here and, and praise this song but at the same time given the context of kanye the machine and his own experience in feeling what he's expressed thus far being shot finding out his friends aren't fucking real you know his enemies are everywhere type of a thing yeah i mean it it does turn into a, a situation of self-preservation huh I, mean, I don't know how i feel about that but at the same time something i'm also trying to do for myself is I don't have to have an opinion on everything. I think this is another problem with current American society, largely driven by things like social media and, and corporate media is opinions, opinions, opinions. Here's this thing and you must have an opinion. I don't, I don't have to have an opinion. I don't know anything about what Kanye is talking about. I have no idea what this life is like. Who am I to have an opinion and, and stand firm on an opinion that's based on total bullshit, really, you know? So we'll leave it at that. Cold ass song, no, holy shit, man. Piano Love Got a Heart, that's a fact. Track four is called Drum Work. It's produced by Derringer. Uh, I don't know what the fuck this says here. I don't know how to pronounce this, <laughs> this other person's name. Seventh, seventh the Genius, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, track four, Drum Work. Here we go. I like how the piano is kind of blurry. Damage. Uh, love. 
I was the most overlooked, now I'm the most noticed, hope it's noted, this how real niggas supposed to look, uh -huh. <laughs> my verse is like an open book, about my life and the niggas I shot, and all the dope I cook, take yeah. it off the stove, don't let it overcook, you getting smoked, you put a hand on me, shots running down, even if he had a broken foot, all through COVID, we still sold it by the boatload of push, pandemic got two niggas hurting, ain't no shows to book, <laughs> Oh. Back ends to collect. We shot at niggas back then. The Mac 10 was the sketch. Smart with my money, now I tend to invest. OG told me keep them feelings in your chest. Just kill them with your success. They gonna be sick when they vision your neck. Ooh, God the damn, this is crazy. Man. For the AV with the baguettes. Got bitches on my neck like I'm Swaley. Signed the shady, then hit the connect. And you know what I did with the check, my nigga. When I was going broke, them niggas never offered help. So fuck them, I did it all myself. So it's fuck love with the crazy flow. I just paid my rent a couple days ago. But I still got a fence and ride Mercedes though. The one you thought won't be here. But oh yeah, I'm drumming. That's word to calm. My mama proud of all that I'm becoming. They asking where did I come from? But my life been so crazy, I'm startled by the conundrum. Cause I've been trying to make it since 90 something. That's dumb young sent me back where I come from. Now that I'm here, huh. I ain't going stupid. I'm going dumb dumb. Found a way like fuck it, make it nasty, put a dummy. A <laughs> full of two stripes, but still get that vice. They like to shoot dice and you nice, but it gets no life. I probably shoot twice, I do right. They think it's impossible. That ain't logical. <laughs> Got bigger things to worry about than I say my name. I find that humorous since I have absolutely no fucking idea how to pronounce that name. Let's go up to Kanye's, or not Kanye's, Conway. Conway's verse. There's some cold ass lines in here. <clears throat> Pandemic got you hurting. Ain't no shows to book. All through COVID, we still sold it by the boatload to push. That's kind of wild. So, you know, Kanye, or fucking, who am I going to say Kanye? The rest of the Conway. He's talking about my verse is like an open book about my life and all the people I shot and all the dope I cooked. So, I, you know, as I was listening to this stretch right here through that opening portion, I was thinking of rap snitch knishes. <laughs> Don't tell on yourself, bro. What are you doing? Don't tell on yourself. Anyway, oh, I bumped the mic. Oh. Keep them feelings in your chest. Just kill them with your success. They're going to be sick when they vision your neck. I mean, think about that. You're, you're the person who, who tries to kill Conway. You shoot him in the head. I you shoot him in the neck. I got him. I got that fucker. He's dead. He's dead. He doesn't die. Oh, well, who gives a shit? He's fucking paralyzed. He can't do shit now. Doesn't stay paralyzed. I don't. And I don't mean like fully paralyzed, but like with his face and stuff. <clears throat> and now he is signed with uh, Eminem. Got a record out. Still making tons of money. Like, foo. Holy shit. Talk about mission failed, right? If you're the one trying to kill him. Hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah, they're saying, you know what I did with the check? <laughs> Went and got me a brick, half a brick and some fent. So he just goes back to making drugs. God damn, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, when I was broke, the people never offered to help. So fuck them. I did it all myself. Hmm. See, I just put a bullseye on my target uh -huh. With Darren John production, I'm on the verse That's when you find in the caucus I'm air one right? like the white on white forces 5'10", I walk in like I'm enormous uh -huh. They let me in the game, I lock in and vault it She threw me bomb pussy, so I had the LaVisca Shinardi If I record it, it's dope You can sniff or you snort it You uh -huh. think of me, you should envision the optic I've been the coldest, I was focused Back at Ocho in the littest my department Ocho, This ain't a drill, this is getting alarming I uh -huh. got it hard for gold trophy they ain't finna get tarnished nah. Look, the east side raised me This shit was crazy Summertime shootings right on Bailey Guns clapping, sounding like it made us. I rose from this shit, it's getting crazy You see, we legends in the flesh Now's the time to give us daisies Not later Now, nah. oh yeah, 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 yeah Okay I didn't understand that at first Now I get it Drum work's gonna get a heart too I'm liking this People were telling me it's kind of like not as grimy, but the the Griselda group in general kind of has more of a grimy sound. I can kind of hear that a little bit. 
This lion, I rose from his shit, it's getting crazy. You see, we're legends in the flesh. Now's the time to give us daisies, not later. And I think that idea means usually people talk about somebody after they're died when they're pushing up daisies. But no, we're legends now. So pretending like we're, pretend like we're pushing up daisies now. I did like to, uh, they say to drill, this is getting alarming. I grinded hard for gold trophies. They ain't fitting to get tarnished. <laughs> <clears throat> Good line. Second verse, you know, the, the second, third verse, these two feature verses, I, I mean, they're cool. Um, but I think what's happening right now for me is I'm really enjoying Conway. Like what he's talking about. Because I feel like with him, I have a little bit more insight to his life, just a tiny bit, right? And what he's talking about, he is a little bit more open. And so these two are saying stuff and I'm like, okay, cool, but you know, anyway, okay, let's move on. Trek 5 is called Wild Chapters with T.I. in Novel. Who's T.I.? I, T.I., I think I should know, uh, right? I, I always want to think of Treasure Island. <laughs> is it T.I. the one that made uh, trap music? And that kind of like launched the whole, I think so. Anyway, produced by Hitboy, Track 5, Wild Chapters. Ha. In a rose truck waiting for the light change. Think it damn, I came from the bottom. Look how my life changed. And all I did was write pain. But I'm still running the streets. Line the whole one day I might change. My road through the trenches was cool. Cool sound in the production here. I lied and I cheated. I know some of the shit I was doing was too egregious. So my girl, I apologize. This time I mean it. You know I got a good heart, yo. You seen it. Look at all the niggas I look out for and people I'm feeding. I had a son a little while after, huh? and when he died, no, it was hard for you to smile after. Okay. Well, all that was huh. going on, I had a child after. So how the fuck I'm supposed to be a proud rapper? Huh? Story of my life, shit got wild chapters. Talk to him. Okay. I'm so proud all day. Jesus. On my grand always. I'm just pausing here because I'm thinking about, you know, the idea God don't make mistakes, and with that, maybe. You know, when you think about, yeah, I had a son a little while after, and when he died, you know it was hard for you to smile after. Well, all that was going on, I had a child after. It just, the you know, so how the fuck am I supposed to be a proud rapper? And, fuck, man. I guess I shouldn't have paused. I don't really have a whole lot to say and just... Considering these ideas, these moments in life, and what he's talked about here, wild chapters. And you know, I, I mean, it really does encompass the idea if you don't know what's coming, you don't know what's coming. So fried all day on my grind, always seen some foul, foul times in this wild, wild life. Let's roll into the verse with T.I. and Novel. See, I know how I feel to be behind the wheel. Behind the wheel. With a trunk full of dope, blue lights in the mirror. In the mirror. Lights in the chair and give to him chill. Neat beat. I kind of like that humming sample that's going on. It really does add a, a cool layer to the beat on this. I like how the drums come back in and then they'll kind of pause and come back in. This is a cool song. I like how they pause the production there and then drop back in. This is a great song. Great song. Because you can just kind of feel it. You know, you can really soak in this one. And what's neat is, you know, Conway has 
described a lot of things that is probably not relatable to all of us, <clears throat> or most of us, I should say. But that one, it's a little bit more um, open, a little bit more flexible, and so you and your own life can take it. Oh, good, the sun's shining through the window. <laughs> I have the blinds, and the blinds are closed, but there's the little slits from the strings, and it shines right through. Every now and then I ask my wife, can we please put something up like aluminum foil? And no, she's completely against it. We never, we literally never have this window open ever. And she's completely against it. <laughs> Fine. Great song. Wild Chapters. Great song. Every verse too. You did, let's talk about T.I. stuff a little bit. From the stoops and the benches to the apartment project with fences, we're trying to get up out of the trenches, you know. If you were born to stand out, you wasn't meant to fit in. Yeah, that's a, I like that line a lot. If you're born to stand out, you wasn't meant to fit in. Because I, I like that in the sense of, I, I think there are people who struggle with the idea of not fitting in and maybe feeling a little bit of like an outcast or an exile or whatever, but you could take that idea and flip it and go, I stand out, you know? And, you know, maybe you don't stand out in a good way. <laughs> maybe that's what, a part of the problem, right? But it is, there is some perception there, how you perceive what is happening. There is this part, too. Uh, see, I know how it feels to be behind the wheel with a trunk full of dope, blue lights in the mirror, license and insurance, give it to him, chill. You either play this shit perfect or you go to jail. From hoping I ain't got no warrants to Florence, Italy, touring. What a great little summary of coming up out of the trenches right there. And then novel, or novella, however you say it. Trying to keep peace of mind. Guess I'm flawed by design. Pray to God to keep my sister alive. Down the Hennessy to keep the memories from falling out of my eyes. I mean, that, that kind of says it all right there. I've seen some wild chapters dealt with grief through all stages, turning of the pages deeper than Neil Gaiman. I don't know who that is. There's no annotation. The world's in a hurry. It's hard to instill patience. Oh my God. I could talk about this for 20 minutes. <clears throat> We're due for reparations and people are still waiting. I sit in silence looking for silver lining. I feel like Robin Williams laughing to keep from crying. Fuck, man. You'd understand too if you only stood where I am on the hills of Jerusalem in the city of Zion. That verse is pretty powerful, in my opinion. I mean, that's about as open as it gets right there in terms of just describing this, this feeling of anxiety and worry and concern and, and trauma and trying to deal with all this shit, trying to instill patience in a world that's in a hurry, feeling flawed by design. Huh. Good shit. That is definitely a contender for favorite off the album. Wild Chapters, that was great. Great production too, cool beat, great sound. <clears throat> Track six is called Guilty, produced by Beat Brothers and Bink. Bink sounds familiar. I don't know, anyway, track six, Guilty. Guilty. Hmm. Hmm. Cool. Nice settle into the beat there. Cool. Uh, look, reject back from the trenches. Back with the Mac with extensions. Thinking about when they had me laying on my back and in intensive. Clapped in my head and neck. That shit was inches from hitting my carotid. I would have bled to death and nobody could stop it. Was Set the bullet too close to my voice box to try to get it out of Can't touch when now I die, there's anything we can do about it Bell's palsy from damage to my nerves, no feeling in my legs I took a bullet in the head, nigga That's why I chuckle at the comments that I read about the way my face looking shit I could have been dead, just focus on the lyrics, don't focus on my appearance You know you too pussy to go through it, so you fear it You see the way that they quoting this shit hysterically What you see is the dopest of any era machine Ask Benny, ask West, had semis, had text, nigga No kizzy, we was really at next, nigga really played with me Then he really got stretched, nigga Ah. Machine. Shit. 
quick and fast and dirty. Great, great bit of piano in the production on this one. It being called guilty is kind of fascinating to me because it doesn't sound like guilt, does it? And so I wonder, I wonder if the idea of calling this guilty is more of a, um, I am guilty, therefore I have been punished type of a thing. I wonder if he takes this, this injury, this paralysis is what, what's it called? Uh, Bell's palsy. It's kind of like judgment from God for the things that he's done in his life. And he is guilty and he's not trying to, you know, not trying to play it up. No, it's not my fault. You know, he's not trying to weasel out of the um, responsibility for what he's done. Hmm. Thinking about when they had me laying on my back at intensive, clapped in my head and neck. Shit was inches from my car. It says carotid, but I don't think that's what he said. I think this is a typo here. I would have bled to death and nobody could stop it. Doctor said the bullet's too close to my voice box to try and get it out. You can't touch it. I doubt there's anything we can do about it. No feeling in my legs. I chuckle at the comments that, re that I read about the way my face looks. I could have been dead. Just focus on the lyrics, don't focus on my appearance. You're too pussy to go through it, so you fear it. Excellent line, right there. Excellent line. Because I, there's a lot of truth in that. I bet so many people who have, well, I mean, this is a very general statement, obviously, like I can't, uh, I can't bring receipts. <laughs> but I'm sure there are plenty of people who have made fun of somebody like Kanye, or God damn it. <laughs> Kanye the machine, no, Conway. <clears throat> you laugh oh look at his stupid face ha, ha. but like deep down inside going fuck man if I got shot in the neck and the head and my face looked like that I wouldn't be able to take it you ever notice that it seems like the people who are quickest to make fun of something are also the ones that are uh, the most upset if that thing happens to them type of thing it's kind of telling it's kind of telling hmm hmm Good shit. Good shit. The moral of the story, I ain't switch up my pitch. Staying true to myself and take whatever I get. A lot of people rap and they don't spit it like this. Roll it in my wrist. Lean the pot like this. I did. So I, I get cranky about this when they, they conclude the rhyming structure with the same word. And he was doing that for a while. So I was kind of getting a little eh. But good song. Good song. Just fascinating that it's called Guilty. You know, it's it's like... This, I, I am guilty, I've been found guilty, I'm convicted, here's my sentence, and there it is, that's it. And he just keeps moving forward kind of a thing, you know? He takes his punishment, assuming that's what he's going for here. Assuming that's what he's going for. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, track seven's John Woo flick. I may have heard this before. I'll, it'll be interesting to see if it's familiar to me or not. It's produced by Kill and Derringer. Let's drop in track seven, John Wooflick. And this one has a music video too. Tell the rap niggas we taking over. Had to change the flow up. Now I'm in the Maybach, sipping a spade mimosa. Take a big and make a quota with the baker soda. Pray to Jehovah K with the shoulder strap. Spray is over. Wow. If I say so, spray a roller, spray the fold up. Niggas, good fellas like Ray Liotta. I think I have heard this before. This does sound familiar. It's been a while though. He need to wake his nose up. I'm from the east side. The niggas over there be wild. Catch your body, throwing bullets like Aaron Rodgers. I'm looking at these rap niggas like it's their problem. Pop in the middle of your head like Larry Johnson. Push in the morning, drink my yak in the day. I'm tired of hearing old niggas talk about back in the day. Sprayed 80, the baby woke up. What the fuck? 
I mean, this is kind of this. I don't, I don't want to sit here and say it's challenging to listen to, but it's challenging for me to accept as a reality. But it is a reality. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily true or false or whatever. I have no idea. But I mean, shit like this does happen. And it's wild. It's really wild to think about. And, it, and not even not even isolated to the U.S. I still remember being in like fucking grade school or whatever and what was that country down in Africa the, to, the Hutus and the Tutsis or whatever and they're just like massacring each other and they were teaching us about this in school and you know I kind of remember news reports and shit and just like whole villages being gunned down it's just wild I mean it's just wild wild so this idea spray 80 Everything. Make sure you hit everything. Empty them clips. And I really can't even begin to imagine what it's like to be that person, the person who's spraying everything. I mean, you have to be so far gone, so much has been lost, or you're so swallowed up in this thing that you believe in, that you'll do anything. And that's not an indictment on Conway. I almost said Kanye again. I'm not, I'm not really focusing on him. I'm just focusing on this concept, this concept, this act, what a person, their state needs to be in to do something like this. There's a lot of things out in the world I don't understand. I don't understand how people can do certain things. Like I don't understand how men can rape. I really, really, really don't get that one. Hmm. Let's keep going. I'm getting a little too off into the deep end. Let's keep rolling here. I swing this Mac, I'm clearing the fists. Enough shooters on my team to embarrass the pistons. Lots of sports references. I need a pile of dirty cash or somewhere I can risk it. This for my niggas in the Fed Max who pray daily. I remember that. My dog pulled his mask up and sprayed 80. That's Wayne Perry shit. Y'all niggas Wayne Brady. I'm leaving with your daughter if you can't pay me. These OGs round me real veterans. My shooters real reckless. It take a lot for me to feel threatened. Nigga, the interviews, they asking real questions. Like, is you still hustling? Your videos, you using real weapons? No comment. If it's time to clip, no comment. I got the call about it before I seen it on the news. Like brown interior. The seats peanut butter too. Ran up in his lock and take that nigga phone. That nigga phone. Ah. Catch him in the cell, but I sprayed him up. <laughs> he did it for some more. You went to pray it up. Machine gun in the summer, still wearing gloves. BOP me in the mess hall with all my blood. It's your love. I see you, honey. Get caught with it. I'll be home in three summers. Get caught without it. Might not live to speak about it. My yeah. Get caught with it. I'll be home in three summers, right? So he goes to prison because he's getting caught with the weapon. Get caught without it. Might not live. It's a very odd kind of uh, paradox, especially in a country where you have so many people, certain types of people, right? I only have to say who. I'll just talk and you'll know who exactly, exactly I'm talking about. Who talk about the Second Amendment right, the right to bear arms, and I need my guns to protect myself and blah, blah, blah. Now, the group of people you're likely imagining how do you think they feel about someone like West Side Gun having a weapon with them to protect themselves? Probably not for it, right? Nope, nope, bad person, gangbanger, drug dealer. They don't, they, they can't have weapons. And of course, the irony is these are the people who need weapons the most to protect themselves. Now, there's the other side of the coin of, well, you're also using the weapon to uh, cause harm. So it's not necessarily protection only, but there is a... Uh, a fun little paradox there. Well, I shouldn't say fun, but a paradox, right? How can you advocate gun rights and the right to bear arms and self-protection and then immediately say, but not you? Shit don't work that way, right? Now, of course, there's laws and all this. I mean, I'm taking this something. I'm, I'm, I'm making a very simple argument out of something that's very complex, but I think you guys understand where I'm coming from. I'm honestly having a hard time with this song. Not with the sound, not with the lyrics, not, but more so like the realism of it. 
like this is a heavy lift for me this one john Wuflick. and i i say this about to pimp a butterfly because i feel like to pimp a butterfly is an amazing album no no question definitely one of the best that hip-hop has ever provided but it, it's a heavy lift. I can't listen to it. I don't listen to it very often because I get into these walls and you and I almost get like sick because it's just, I believe Kendrick. I believe what he's saying. I believe what he's going through. I can feel the emotion. This song, I believe what's being said. Like I've mentioned before how when people try to convince me of something, the more they try to convince me, the less I believe them. Nobody in this song is trying to convince me of shit, basically. And with this being midway into the album, everything that Conway has said up to this point, and very matter of fact, straightforward, not not even necessarily repeating himself either, just kind of laying out this piece and this piece and this piece, and gradually you get the mosaic effect, right? As the puzzle pieces fill in, you can see the whole picture of his life, what he's gone through, what he does. This one is like, fuck, a little too little too real let's finish this up there's about 45 seconds left maybe i'll go through the lyrics i don't know i mean i'm i'm legit saying like I, i'm kind of having a hard time handling this one and i i don't mean that from a sense of like calling anybody you know evil or depraved but it's just fucking dark it's just really dark there you go I mean, the, the chorus kind of says it all. Jesus. I mean, I'll let it finish up. Basically, it's this track is doing its job extremely well. Talk about music painting a picture. This is an ugly picture that has been painted. But what makes it so ugly and so tough to deal with is probably is how accurate it is, real it is. This is this is a tough one. I can't I can't lie. This is a tough one. But at the same time because of that, it makes me really appreciate it for what it is because it's rare when you come across a song and go, "Yeah, bro, I can't. This was a little too heavy." We can't really listen. It's kind of like um, Slow Tie put out that album, Ugly. Great album. And I can't listen to it anymore because about, what, four or five months after the album came out, he got charged with two counts of rape. It's going to trial next year. Like, some shit went down. I don't know if he's guilty or not. We'll, we'll find out. But as soon as I found out about that, then you go listen to the album Ugly, you go, ooh. Ooh. And you just kind of want to like, ooh. Ooh. Like, you know, I can't really listen to Ugly anymore. Despite, honestly, to this point, if it weren't for the, the rape charges against Slow Tie, Ugly is probably my album of the year. Over Scaring the Hose, if you can believe it or not. Probably. Excellent album. Except for the part where it's probably real. And so it's like, I can't, I can't listen to this shit, you know? Same parallel here with John Wooflick. Looking forward to seeing the video again. I might remember the video. I don't know. Impressive. Very impressive. Scary, kind of, too. Hmm. Mixed feelings here. Let's keep going. Track 7 is called Stressed. It's produced by Beat Butcher and Derringer. Let's jump in. Tracks. Oh, no. Track 8 is Stressed. I don't remember what number I said. Here we go. I'm glad Stressed is coming after track seven because i am currently stressed <laughs> hopefully he can like talk me through this shit he could tell me how to deal with it cool be here you know another thing i think of too is if i'm this stressed listening to it what's it like to try and live it i can't even fucking fathom that great beat right here Nice jump fill. Life is about trials and tribulations and overcoming obstacles. But I'm tired of shit I'm facing. Cause it's not only mine, got everybody's situations that I gotta make better. 
And that shit take cheddar. That shit call. That shit I guess everybody want me to save them. I guess niggas think 10 million was shady paid <laughs> Tell them no, they talk down on me and try to play it. Guess they forgot about all the other shit that I gave them. Do anybody care that I'm stressed? I'm stressed too. I'm ah, good one. Died, the rest of them doing time. And do anybody care that I'm stressed? I'm going I don't come around, so I guess it's out of sight, out of mind. But do anybody care that I'm stressed? Do niggas care? Everybody got their hand out asking me for shit. But do anybody care that I'm stressed? Great song. I'm going do anybody man. care? Took a cord and put his throat through that. I wish I had a chance to tell a nigga don't do that. Fuck uh, off, niggas, niggas don't understand depression is real. Uh -huh. People stressing about real life shit. You stressing your bills. That ain't shit. Not too long after my cousin hung himself. Uh -huh. I never told nobody, but I lost a son myself. Imagine uh -huh. being in the hospital holding your dead baby. Uh -huh. And he looked just like you. You trying to keep from going crazy. That's my world. That's why I drink a bottle daily for all the shit I keep bottled in lately. Do any Fuck. You know, I, it, I mean, he's just, he's painting this so well, painfully well. And there's been studies that show even like, just forget about the fucking, the, the attempted murder on his life, the fucking drug dealing, the police, the, the, the people asking for money, ask for help his cousin committing suicide the baby there have been studies that showed like there's like a full deviation shift of iq for people who are perpetually stressed about money just being broke is a mental stressor it it lowers your iq it's so much stress it affects your mind being broke that's one piece of a fucking massive massive puzzle that is being laid out right here. And I was thinking about, of course, Crown by Kendrick Lamar. You can't please everybody. Um, all that you've done, you know, gives them amnesia. They don't remember. He's saying the same thing here. What about all the times I did help you? You don't remember that. Mm. God, this shit. It blows me away how much the human mind can endure this is a lot this is a lot to take in it what's odd too about it kind of surprising to me is the way he asked the question does anybody care that i'm stressed it's not even that it's almost like in passing which is insane like if you this much shit is piled up on your mind and it I mean, it shows, I guess, maybe the resilience or how much crap he's just been dealing with for so long. You'll start to become numb to it. Maybe it becomes normal, which makes me think of the line from Little Sims. You know, it's been it's been a hell of a week, but you've been saying that all year, not realizing that what your life is, it's not temporary. This is your life. All this stress. Incredible. This is fucking very powerful. I'm scared and I'm stressed. I'm stressed too. I'm most of my homies died. The rest of them doing time, man. Do anybody care? Like, this should be a metal song. The chorus should be just fucking screaming. Screaming. And it's not. He's just kind of passively asking. Does anybody even care? I drink cause I'm stressed. I'm stressed cause I'm depressed. Depressed cause I'm just tired of this shit. They like, why you stressed? Boy, you blessed. They don't know about the nights when I can't even get rest. Sleep, burning this wow. push while I pace, crying in the mirror every time I look at my face. If you only knew what it took, what it takes, you only care what I put in my safe. What? Do anybody care that I'm stressed? I'm stressed too. I'm Most of my homies died. The rest of them doing time, man. Do anybody care that I'm stressed? You was by yourself them nights in the gym. You was by yourself them nights on the track. And you said, I'm going to come back. And that's what you did. You came back. But it was that moment, that moment when the world said, I don't want to be around you. I don't know you. You're not popular. You're not a winner. I don't got time to be waiting for you to win again. Uh -huh. You came alive. That was the motivation that pushed you to come back. And now you're back. Now you're back at 100. And everybody know your name again. But you know what? You're not bitter. You're not mad. You're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. Huh. 
I have to believe that Conway is a Kendrick fan. You know, I was thinking about, ain't nobody praying for me. Ain't nobody praying for me. I, I imagine, let me know in the comments. Let me know if, if Conway has had made any mention of listening to Kendrick and kind of, I don't want to say being inspired by Kendrick, but you know, there's, there's a lot of things that Kendrick has said in his music that I have to believe resonates with Conway and what he was going through in his life. Fuck, man. <laughs> like, <clears throat> there's a part of me that, that wants to just fucking cry. Not so much for this guy, but with this guy. I, I feel fine right now, but... Uh, I think if he was sitting here in front of me telling me all this shit, I would just lose my shit. Like, this is unbelievable. And then, you know, all this stuff he's talking about, and then he, it comes back around, you know, crying in the mirror every time I look at my face. I hate this shit. Just the fucking cherry on top of a mountain of stress. This outro, you know, the outro... I like I like what they're doing. I get the point. But this outro, you know, talking about they wouldn't help you and you're a loser and they walk right by you and they only care about you when you're winning and all this other shit, you know. To me, all that all that does is reveal how like broken our society has become, how fixated we are on the winner, the champions, the the ones that have it all. How much we celebrate that aspect and we don't celebrate the struggle, the effort, which uh, let me rephrase that because that doesn't sound good, right? Like we don't want to celebrate struggle, but we don't talk about the work. And it's kind of created this idea of instant gratification and technology has played into that as too. There's so much that we can do that's just instant now. We've got so much on, on our phone. We can see immediately and we can order shit and it's here the next day. I mean, but things take work. It takes time. You fail. It's hard. You want to blow up. And it doesn't, you know, there's all these things that come into it. And so you could actually be doing pretty well, but still feel like a failure because you don't have all the attention and you're not being focused on whatever, but it doesn't, I mean, that's just, it's dumb. It's dumb. I was thinking, what was it? I was watching something just yesterday on YouTube and I was like, why the fuck do we care so much about movie stars? Why? I mean, cool. It's a movie star. It's neat to hear them talk about, you know, who they actually are in interviews and stuff like that. But like there was something, it went there at the red carpet and the fans were going up. They're just fucking people. And all they do is pretend to be somebody else. Like who gives it? Like why does this matter so much, you know? And it's this whole like industry. And it's just wild to me. Meanwhile, here's somebody living a real fucking life. A hard, hard life and where's the celebration for that for surviving that and coming out you know and again i gotta that's not a great word i'm not trying to say to celebrate the suffering i don't want people to suffer to begin with but i mean if we're going to care about somebody and what they've done what they've accomplished in their life fucking surviving all of this holy shit you know like there needs to be some sort of metal kind of like surviving a war or something this is a hell of an album <clears throat> Hell of an album. Fuck. Let's move on to track nine. I, I don't know how much more of this I can take. <laughs> like, holy shit. Holy shit, man. This is impressive on so many levels. Track nine is called So Much More. <laughs> Here we go. Produced by Justice League. Let's drop in. Track nine. So Much More. They say the eyes is the windows to the soul of a man I look at you and see you weak so I know where you stand I can't let nobody in the way of my goal and my plan To say I'm your bro, I'm your man I know they won't understand drum work, you know it's the brand Created diamonds when niggas left me with coal in my hand oh, nice. I was like a Thanos bitch, I got every stone in my hand Used to stand in front of that store with the pole in my pants Now I'm parked right in front of that same store in the land Talk to him. I'm a motherfucking legend, nigga And I ain't have to sell my soul to sell no records, nigga I wrote some of the illest verses ever and shifted the culture But I probably never get the credit, nigga But part of me hope I never do Cause if I'm already called the best ever, this shit was left to do. Why think all my shit so electric when I step in booth? My tweet got taken out of context. They think I left the group. What's wrong with yeah. you? It's so much more. It's so much more. more. Don't let them put me in no box. Cause I'm so much more. more. 
I'm so much more, I'm so much more, so more. Winning coats for the kids and hot meals for the homeless. They post me getting arrested, but this side of me, they never yeah, show it. Sure, they hear sure. the songs about how we be selling dope in the shootouts. We just products of our environment. You know this. I never DM'd a rap on my cover and asked them to throw it on his pages. I was too focused on staying focused. I think that's a bogus way to try to get noticed. When people organically fuck with your music, that's a bonus. But yeah. to each his own, then I'd rather grind myself. That's a key component. Like I told Skis, you gotta see. The what modern day slaves crackers and all the masters i know that line mm, i want to say it's kanye but i don't think it is kanye we're playing the word masters kanye puts money no no there's a song there's a song fuck there's a, that's the lyric something about their own and all the masters maybe it was jay-z because he, he throws jay-z up here too maybe it's a jay-z song i can't remember Hmm. Something that I really like about this song, the sound and in, in, in what he's saying here and, and kind of promoting. There's only a little bit left. I'll finish it up and then I'll hit some of the lyrics. A shift up, positive, because the last two songs were fucking hit. Last three songs, four, fuck, four songs. Heavy, right? I was saying that like, I, this is getting too much. So it, when kind of a turn lets the listener come out of this dark, dark place and kind of, Catch a breath. So very important right here, the placement of this song in the album. It's so much more, it's so much more. Even the production's kind of up, lifting, inspiring, you know? Love the piano coming in here. I'm so much more. I'm so much more. So much more. Great song. Something I really like about it too is on the surface, it sounds like he's telling us that. I feel like he's telling him that himself. Think about all the things he has said thus far and how little support he's kind of put on display. You know, it just sounds like it's been him enduring all of this bullshit. And now on this track, lots of references to what people have said about him and things that things have taken out of context. And like, like, don't believe what people are saying about me. But imagine his own self, right? Seeing these things being said about him and just telling himself, you're more than that. You're more than that. You're more than that. This is wild. This is kind of wild, man. I didn't, I didn't, people said that Conway was going to be a little bit more, less grimy, a little bit more open, introspective type of, I didn't realize it would be this much. Like, this is fucking incredible. This is like a biography in rap form. Hmm. You know, don't let him tell you one side of the story. It's so much more than that. And this is the part where he's telling us, but I feel like too, there's a layer of him telling himself, don't believe these things they say about you. Like, don't, don't let these ideas get into your head. You know, stay true to yourself, focus, etc. Jesus. I didn't have to sell my soul to sell no records. Created diamonds when people left coal in my hand. Mm hmm. Hmm. They post me getting arrested, but this side of me, they never show it. They hear the songs about how we sell and dope and the shootouts. We're just products of our environment. You know this, which I'm glad I, I touched on that earlier, you know, just trying to be aware of that and not, not shit on them for it. Fortunately too, in my opinion, at least for my listening experience, nothing that's been said has been glorified in any way. It's all been very dark, pretty ugly. Mm. This is an incredible album. Holy shit. So much more gets a heart. I think Wild Chapters is still my favorite thus far. That was a great jam. Great jam. All right, let's move on to track 10, which is called Chanel Pearls, produced by Cosmo, Daniel Cruz, and Dylan Graham. Track 10, Chanel Pearls. It's got Jill Scott in there as well. Draco on the seat, I hope I'm making it home. 
head on a swivel, I always stay on my toes. The ones you love most wanna know what your safe really hold. No morals in the streets now, niggas breaking the cold. Smoke a blunt of pressure, this fame is taking its toll. I'm thankful ain't no shows, I need a break from the road. Put niggas in position, they still ungrateful, it shows. It's fucking up my energy, shit is making me cold. My Damn. life a series of drama just like them HBO shows. When I die, I'm going out like the Pharaoh draped me in gold. I'm still gonna run this shit till I'm 80 years old. They realizing lately I'm the one that's been taking control. Crack the table, car bones when we leave Miami Beach. And I brought Santa Beach, your kiss tastes like a cane of peaches. You got that shit on you, killing them, that's just saying the least. I just realized they feel like my success is they failure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You wanna be yeah. a boss, you be resilient when pressure gon' build up. Some niggas gon' have issues with you and never gon' tell you. We we on. We yeah. filled the buffalo night skies with our minds and sativa. I was your lady, your confidant, your sugar thighs, your soul believer. I know you. I know you. So I never trip. Fuck the little girls that you hit, waiting for the change they might get. They wanted that highlight from all the monster stones that you chip, all the little baggies you beg, and all the corners you sit. Intense, some would call it symbiotic, different, and every part is simple and tense. Why I fuck with you most was the you oh, that I get. Cool it shift was the rhyme to spit your confidence in the dick. You'll never know the whole plan. You'll never know. Even in the talent band, a pen in our hand, lyric all oh, out of sins. You'll never know the whole plan. Oh. You'll never know. Yeah, this is almost my favorite also. This is also my favorite. Against Wild Chapters. I don't know. This is a great song. You know, what's so fantastic about this one is it's just a spot of sunshine in all of this dark. All of this dark. Good. The, the flow of the track selection is so great on this album. So well done. There's two more. I I have a lot of faith in in what's gonna come because so far it's been performed to perfection in terms of the list, the track order. But you know, so much more kind of lifted us out of that dark hole, and then now we're here, Chanel pearls, and this is just like a spot of warmth, some peace, <sighs> much needed peace, right? for a very tortured soul much needed peace man holy shit holy shit i want to go through some of these lyrics i haven't i've been a little light on the lyrics i've been more kind of talking general sense and not really breaking down line by line you know hope i'm making it home head on a swivel always stay on my toes the ones you love most want to know what you save really hold no morals in the streets now. People breaking the code. Smoke a blunt of precious fame is taking its toll. Thankful there's no shows. I need a break from the road. People in the position, they're still grateful it shows. She's just kind of going through all this shit, you know? Still going to run this shit till I'm 80 years old. They're realizing lately, I'm the one that's been taking control. Private table, Cabron's, we're leaving Miami. Got you the bus down Cardi. That's 30 bands at least. Chanel Pearl, Chanel Bag, hold that Lambo key. You always held me down. You knew me back when I ran the street. So it's just this person in his life that's actually one of the rare, rare few treasures in his life. This this person. Hmm. Let's keep going. There's two more. Track 11 is called Baba's, produced by Beat Butcher and Derringer. Let's jump in. Track 11. Oh, wow. Whoa, I was not expecting that after that opening drum fill. Whoa, it's like a murder scene or some shit, right? It's talking about blood right here. Blood gurgling at the back of his throat. The smell of gunpowder suffocates his nose. Fuck. Echoes of screams clinging to life. But he will never leave. Came back like his prophecy. Roberto Cavalli, drenched in Burberry trenches, immaculate in Prada boots, Tom Ford florals, getting fed white grapes by a shorty named Ruby. This is wild. I'm fingering her pussy as he kisses her on the neck. She is our bird's nest. 
I ask for her by request. The night gets wet. Spontaneous shootouts. Niggas bring out the heat in the chilly Buffalo streets. So pause real quick. It, I mean, it feels like one of those old school horror films, doesn't it? That's just old school horror films. That's exactly what it sounds like. And this like spoken word poem, essentially by Keisha Plum. Fucking brutal. Uh, zip on stomach, that's mad stitches. Young mothers crack addictions. Young niggas, father never present, dad was missing. Young king, pack the jail, pack the prison, come home, go back to prison. Bad decisions, bad position, judges over sentence, that's the system, crack the system. Dirty cops, police stations, old cases, probation. Parole boards and dirty lawyers, uh. Yeah. Public schools, underpaid teachers, miseducation. Look what I became. I went from king to a god. Fucking wild, man. And I love, I guess that's guitar. It's very distorted and wobbly, or fucking like, or like a wah to it. That song reminds me of, there's a, a subgenre in metal called stoner metal and the songs are really long and it's just kind of like a slower pace with just these heavy riffs just wow this could have been like a stoner metal track fucking wild wild all this shit that conway is detailing here zipper on stomach that's mad stitches young mother crack addictions young people's fathers never present dad was missing Young kings pack the jail, pack the prison, come home, go back to prison. Bad decisions, bad ju- bad position, judges over sentence, that's the system, crack the system, dirty cops, police stations, old cases, probation. Parole boards with dirty lawyers, public schools, underpaid teachers, miseducation, race discrimination, fuck a job application. Not Jesus Christ, 45 is my savior, which... We're going to go into the track called God Don't Make Mistakes. And so I wonder if he's going to kind of paint any description of his own belief. I, well, I won't say anything. I was going to say I I would kind of be surprised if he believed in God, but we'll see, I suppose. Maybe we'll see. Wild. Keisha Plum's spoken word portion was just straight from a horror film. Absolutely. Very well done. That one got a heart. So far, the only songs that don't have a heart are the first one, Lock Load, because I was still settling with the sound. I'll probably like that one. But And then John Woo Flick, because I was like, this is just too much. I, mean, I can't fucking handle it. Final track, off the album, God Don't Make Mistakes, is the title track, produced by The Alchemist, featuring Annette Price. What a ride, you guys. What a ride so far. My God. This is incredible. Incredible. Here we go. Drop it in check 12. Really curious to hear what he says on this closing track. You have this shit on my mind, nigga. No? I got questions. Some of these questions I know the answer to. I don't know the answer to But look, what if I was still on those streets selling crack? What if I was in that car with LeVar when Doughboy got clapped? What if that was me shot in my back when feds ran in Dom house and found that brick? What if that was my pack? What if I was stuck in prison with numbers knowing these niggas wouldn't answer even if they did give me their number? Wouldn't go to my mom's and give her a hundred and put some money on my commissary. Sometimes I sit and I wonder. Was in the driveway with my niggas and Lulu when I got hit. Everything happens for a reason but I'm just saying what if? What if I never got shot in the head? I couldn't get sleep at night, might drop a tear in that hospital bed, thinking it's over with for rocking a mic, they told me I'd 
be paralyzed, neck down. What if the doctor was what right? Was Nigga, right. I walked out that hospital twice. Uh, My mother said I died both times. Guess I did the impossible twice. Sometimes I wonder if this Bell's palsy didn't paralyze my grilling. Will there still be murals on my face painted on side of buildings? I, I mean, would I still be rhyming brilliant? They say I provide the feeling, but will my story still inspire millions? Sometimes I wonder. Ha. Uh. Sometimes I wonder. Will I make it in these streets or will these streets take me? Sometimes I wonder. Fantastic song. Fuck. You know, God don't make mistakes, baby. All the raps and stuff that you wrote in school. All the paper that I used to buy and I thought you was doing your lessons. You was writing raps. God don't make mistakes. This is for you, baby. You come on back to me, Lord, please. Give me my son back. Holy fuck. Little bit of sideways, Bob. Little bit of sideways, Bob. Holy fuck. Huh. That one gets a heart. Huh. That that was uh that was a ride. I'm so close to being able to talk. I'm so close. I'm so close. <laughs> I'm just kind of processing that fucking emotional anvil drop right there at the end. Man. Man. I can do it. I can do it. I can talk. I can do it. Mm. Holy shit. Holy shit. You know, the mind, the mind does wonder, doesn't it? Ah, maybe I, maybe I can't talk. Maybe I can't do it. Maybe not. Maybe not. Mm. Maybe not. Maybe I have to save it for Wednesday. Although I still have to do video reactions. <laughs> Maybe I'll just cut it here for YouTube and then I'll cry on Patreon for five minutes and then talk. <laughs> Holy shit, man. I mean, it's just... I don't know if I've ever heard anything that has pulled me into the life of a person like I have with this. And this album has put me into Conway's world so well. I mean, I, I don't want to sit here and say, well, I can feel it. I know what he went, I don't know what he went through, right? But holy shit, if, if I was ever being told about somebody else's life, here, here we go, man. And you know, and him just thinking back to that day, all the, all the different ways it could have gone, right? All the different ways, and then what? Back to the maybe, right? Maybe. Maybe if I would have done this, but then what would have happened? You know, maybe if I'd done this, then I wouldn't have gotten shot in the head that day. But then what? Would that have been good? You know, not having this terrible, terrible thing, would that have been good? Or did the terrible thing create, lead to the thing that was good? And if you take away the terrible thing, does the good thing still happen? You know, you don't know. Maybe you just don't know. It's fun to have this right now. It's been a while. And this is not a put down to any of the albums I've listened to lately. They've all been pretty good. 
Uh, Smino's Love for Rent, still probably my favorite hip hop album thus far. I'm not saying it's the best, but the one I've enjoyed the most. But it's been a while since I kind of got that that just gut punch, you know. And this one, it's it's a lot of fun for me because I I just I got this whole emotional ride. Conway does such an amazing job. But then too, there's kind of the philosophical side of it for me, which I enjoy. And so I can, I can play with it on that aspect. I can roll with this on that side of the coin, maybe, you know, because there's no answer. And you never know, you, you just, you never know. And I cry because it's terrifying and it's beautiful at the same time. It's just, Life is so fucking raw sometimes, and, and some sometimes things are going great, and then boom, they're not. <laughs> you know, they're not. And sometimes you think you've had just about everything you can fucking handle, and then life comes in with more, and you're like, Jesus Christ, you know? And then there's other times when you're just bored as can be, and you almost wish something would happen, right? This is why I say I, I, I view life, the experience of life as a river where we all start somewhere and we all go back to the sea somehow. And the way that you go, you don't have any say over, right? The, the snow melting and coming down the canyons and they, it doesn't get to decide. That water doesn't choose how it gets to the ocean. But if you take the analogy of life being a river, you're on the boat. You, you can't choose where that river goes, but you can kind of try and steer. You know, you can kind of see some obstacles here, some obstacles there and try and work your way around it. And sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you bang up against some shit. Uh-oh. <laughs> sometimes the water is flat and smooth and slow and nothing's happening. And then sometimes it's just a fucking waterfall and everything's falling apart. But it keeps going keeps going till you get back to the back to the sea Whew. okay well i'm a bit of an emotional wreck so youtube <laughs> this is where i'll stop for you patrons i don't know let's see if i can uh, put some shit together here wow fucking wow